hello students so i welcome you again to the this new class of plant biotechnology course and in this class we will learn about chloroplast transformation and molecular farming i am sure uh, in my through my uh, last classes you already have learned the basics of uh, plant biotechnology where we have already covered tools of genetic engineering and then including vectors and we have also discussed the way one of the way uh, through which we can use to transfer our gene of interest from bacteria to host basically uh, through uh, agrobacterium method now in this class uh, we will learn uh, another so basically in in my agrobacterium class what we have learned is learned is that we use agrobacterium uh, uh, tdna to clone our gene of interest and then later that tdna is transferred from bacteria to host genome that means the plant genome now plant genome is a nuclear genome where most of the time we are targeting the this transfer to happen but since you know that uh, plant cells are unique in the sense that they have besides mitochondria obviously shared with which is shared feature with the uh, animal cells also the plant cells also have additional uh, genome uh, in terms of chloroplast genome now number of due to num the number of chloroplast so which is you know which varies a lot but uh, a cell can have you know millions of chloroplast not uh, not millions of chloroplast that means uh, that thylakoid but the, uh, you know uh, 4 to 40 uh, chloroplast basically so uh, this chloroplast because there is only one single nucleus whereas the number of chloroplasts are more then uh, plant scientists have also exploited this property of plant cells to express protein at more or, or at higher levels and that is where chloroplast transformation and molecular farming features come into picture so if you look at the chloroplast genome so it is a very small it's it's a small genome in comparison in comparison to the nuclear genome which is in generally in mbs or gbs so uh, and if you look at the the how many chloroplast genomes have been sequenced so it is now more than uh, 170 plant chloroplast genomes have been sequenced the size is between ranges between 120 kb to 180 uh, KB and look at the number of genes there are only 120 approximately 120 genes which are encoded by chloroplast genome the, the rest of the genes it is dependent on the nuclear genome now interestingly chloroplast genome uh, is divided into two uh, regions or three regions I should say uh, one is large single copy region second is small single copy region and in between large and sing small there are two inverted repeat regions now that is what I was telling that there are thousands of chloroplast uh, cDNA per mesophyll cells in the plants and that is the beauty of this system that if you want to overexpress a, a protein to very high uh, levels then instead of uh, using nuclear genome you sh we should uh, target the transformation of uh, chloroplast genome that means we should send our gene of interest to the chloroplast genome. Now, why chloroplast transformation? Just to you know uh, summarize this for you. So, uh, for high protein levels, high ploidy, that is up to one to forty percent of of total protein. If you want to achieve, uh, uh, then uh, this is required. Feasibility of expressing multiple proteins from polycystic mRNA. So basically, you know that uh, the chloroplast genome is still the prokaryotic type of genome. So it is not nuclear genome type of nu nuclear genome so there are polycystronic mrna so within one single uh, you know cloning unit or expression unit you can express more than one gene that, that is basically important feature for uh, uh, manipulating a, a, a metabolic pathway then gene containment through lack of fall and transmission also chloroplast there are no chances of recombination and then unique precision due to highly efficient homologous recombination system is there so we'll stop here and we will take the next topic uh, in my next class thank you for joining me